That is a super high grade Lois Lane bondage cover there. Turn it this way so I can see it's all oh, there. That's, yeah. uh, that's great, yeah. He's putting the whips to a dummy of Superman <laughs> while he's strapped in there. What else he got in there? Wow, that's, that's a great cover. Oh, we've talked about this book before. I got yeah. a 9 2. Looks like that? he's got yeah. high bondage covers. Yeah. It's direct US, but Ooh. it's also. Pre Superhero Tales of Suspense. Anything like that at a mid grade, you're lucky if you can even find them. See, they got great covers, these monster covers. Yeah, the Toronto Comic Con. <laughs> I hope you guys like that footage. That's some of the footage that I uh, I shot um, last weekend, or sorry, two weekends ago during the Toronto Comic Con, which is the second largest event of the summer here in well summer it's <laughs> it's march the large second largest event of the year here in canada yeah you know it man next to fan expo it's the big one as they say and it was no disappointment there was lots of vendors the usual good vendors they had their stock out it was a great show we did some sniping and we bagged a boatload of books mm -hmm. how was it for you well, for me, I mean, I, I was I was run ragged. I mean, I, I went nonstop for three days. But if you're asking about how it was for me as far as acquisition-wise, yeah, I would have to say <laughs> my my my. My weekend left a lot to be desired with respect to uh, comic book acquisitions. Let's just leave it at that. Oh, okay. So there were scanty pickings to be had. Oh, well, we no, have... it wasn't scanty pickings, just scanty opportunity for me to... Ah, mm -hmm. Well, you know, you can't buy, we can't search. So if you didn't have the time to go through those bins, and there were lots of bins to be had, and the usual good vendors, man, they had some good stuff. And it wasn't just Big B, people that have quality stuff in their half price off. It was also other vendors like comic book addiction yeah they had ha good quality half off bins they were, had really good stuff Hagenland the usual strong show for Hagenland yeah and yeah. actually this first book is a Hagenland book pick cool, up cool. yeah so there was lots of deals to be had um I basically blew my budget I came home with 20 bucks but it was a great great show picked yeah. up a lot of books including some books I've been looking forward for a while and some golden age goodies yeah yeah and I did have one tragedy this weekend because I saw this really beautiful... Oh, cool. here comes the sad tale. <laughs> the sad tale. This really, really nice gentle giant uh, statue, Imperial Guard statue from the, the Star Wars 30th anniversary. It's a resin statue, very expensive. You go on eBay, these usually go for between two between a buck 80 and 250 us and you know with shipping you you know you're adding an extra 50 so to basically looking around the best part of 300 bucks the us all in 300 bucks which with current exchanges it's about 375 dollars canadian yeah not yeah. cheap and so what i decided to do is and you said how, how how much was it for 150 bucks canadian canadian yeah. so we did the current exchange rate so it's about buck 15 something like that something US. Like that, yeah Wow, so it was a good price, so the box was in good condition, yeah, everything was, it was good? Yeah, perfect, yeah. So what prompted you not to put a bid on that? Well, I figured I'd wait till Sunday night, like ah. literally five minutes before the con closed, I was going to go in there and lowball them. You crazy bastard, you. <laughs> I mean, that's like playing chicken with a steaming train that's headed to yeah. you at 90 miles an hour, man. If you don't get out of the way, you're going to get crushed. In other words, they got sold on you. Yeah, it was it was a really nice piece and a really good price, and I just, I got I got too big for my britches. Wow, well, you you got greedy, buddy. Yeah. You should have put a bid in if you really wanted that. Well, the lesson is learned, man. Do not wait to the last minute. Yeah, I paid the price, so that's one one fish that got away, that's well, for sure. Well, that's the thing. You didn't pay the price, and it was a very <laughs> good price. Anyways, a great condo, a great oh, time yeah. had by all. You picked up some great books. Mike picked up some great books. I almost picked up something Great, Good. But, didn't. <laughs> but anyway, so let's not waste any more time because yeah. we've got a lot of books to go through here. Oh yeah, and we're starting with Jose. Of course. And uh, 
you got to re- I guess this is your new book segment. Am I well, right? Well, not new book in the sense I'm, I'm going to start with the newest book that I picked up. I and mean, of course, people recognize this book. This is Spanish issue number nine from May of 1993. And it's funny thinking about a new book that's like about 25 years old. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hey, where were you in 93? Anyway. It looks like it came off the rack yesterday. Well, yeah, it's it's obviously a near mintish condition, I would say. So something like a 9.2, maybe a 9.4. It's hard to tell with these white covers, but I kind of looked it over. I gave it the old stink eye and it seemed to pass the test so yeah. yeah is it something like a high nine no probably but i mean i would be comfortable again saying around nine two nine four so let's get into it of course i'm a high-end jose i'm a key guy but this is the bargain section now people sometimes ask me what do you consider a bargain to be well that's a relative thing but i will personally tell our viewers what i consider to bargain jose, to be what's a bargain to be okay so in my case a bargain is something that's priced accordingly and it's affordable so it's available to everyone we want would be elitist here and thinking you know spend a lot of money on a book but it'd still be a bargain so for my definition a book about 20 25 dollars yeah and for me for it to can be a bargain i'm a key hunter so what does that mean I go by the overstreet. Now you'll see uh, our fellow uh, co-conspirator here, Mike, often quote the comic book realm. I'm more conservative, so as a key guy, I'm going by the guide. Okay, yeah, by so, the overstreet. Overstreet guide. So for me, for a bargain to exist there, I basically I'm trying to get and pay no more than guide price or less. If I'm a, get a guide price, I'm happy. If I get it under guide price for a key in this market, I am very happy. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about this first book, first appearance of Angela. Also, first appearance of Cagliostro and the Medieval Spawn. Yeah, story by Neil Gaiman and art by Todd McFarlane. Now, in this issue, Spawn is attacked by who else? Angela, there on the cover, a mm-hmm. warrior of heaven who has been hunting Hell Spawn for centuries. Yeah. Now, uh, what I want to get on a little riff about, maybe not a rant or a tirade, but talk about uh, Todd McFarlane, a great talent. Now, go back in time here, back in the 90s, he kind of breathed new life into Amazing Spider-Man, which was seeing a little bit of the doldrums there. Venom, his greatest creation there, was insanely popular, hit a nerve. Visceral, it made Marvel millions of dollars. And that's probably what shaped someone like McFarlane and knowing that he was basically working under a premise of work for hire, which meant he got whatever he was contracted to do to do the issue, and that was it. That's right. Anything he created belonged to Marvel and now Disney, I guess. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, but those are the conditions, and these things were up front. So, understandably, not being completely happy with that kind of setup or dynamic, he created, along with Jim Lee and several other artist creators, Image Comics in the early 90s. The premise or the raison d'etre of that company was to have a company that would make available to established and younger talent an opportunity or venue to create characters and that they would participate it would be more egalitarian yeah so without getting overly long about this what's my beef here well the issue it is here is that mm -hmm, angela was later a subject of a legal battle between mcfarlane and gaiman over the rights to the character which neil Neil gaiman won and received a hefty settlement now what's my opinion about that I don't know. Look, he had a lot riding on this. Spawn had to be a hit, and it was. I mean, the print run on that first issue was kind of insane. I mean, a couple of hundred thousand, if I'm led to believe correctly, sure, something yeah. like that. And it sold. Now, while he kind of like, you know, tried to kind of like, you know, assure his success, he invited some people, big names, writers like Alan Moore and Neil Gaiman to write some stories. And of course, Neil Gaiman created the character of Angela. Yeah. And moving down the road, when he started making money and fr- franchising and licensing the image and the character of, you know, Neil Gaiman came back and said, hey buddy, don't, don't we have some kind of agreement or shouldn't I be getting a kind of check to make a long story short? Yeah. He said, no, you're under work for hire. Mm-hmm. And here we have somebody who basically created his own company to escape and something from that and basically meet the new boss, same as the old boss, doesn't it strike you as yeah. a little hypocritical? Is, the irony of it is a bit ridiculous, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a hubris and the hypocrisy of it. it. Anyway, I do not want to get on a tirade. McFarlane fans, I'm not slagging him, man. It's just my opinion. I think that was pretty bad anyway. Yeah, it's hypocrisy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the rights to the character then were sold, of course, by Game Into Marvel Comics, where she was integrated into the Marvel Universe and the 2003 story, The Age of Ultron. And her character was expanded upon in the 2014 storyline, Original Sin, mm-hmm. uh, where she was established to be the lost sister of Thor, the daughter of Odin and Freya. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, yeah, not a Spawn fan, of course. I own the first issue. It was given to us for free by a good friend of ours. Yeah. But nonetheless, a nice minor key pickup from the boys at Hagenland. Shout out to Wes Hagen and the man from Hagenland. They have the good stuff. Lots of bins. And what the best dealers did, this is what they did. They offered everything. Dollar books, you know, bargain books, yeah. modern books, wall books, high quality books. Yeah. They offered everything, a little bit of everything. So let's end it by saying that the 47th Overstreet price breaks for this book are $15, $22, and $28 in the 8, 9, and 9.2 grade splits. Of course, we just said it looks to be at least a 9, 9.2 copy. 15 bucks paid from uh, Hagen Land, which is what, 11 bucks US, something you like paid, that. You paid nothing. Basically, well under guide yeah. then. Yeah. Okay, so let's get to the second you book here on our bargain one segment. Here. One more that qualifies as a Jose Bargain con book. Here we have DC nice. Superstars, Volume 1, issue number 17 from December of 1977. Noise. Noise. Yeah, so. Uh, first appearance of the Bronze Age Huntress? Well, question mark on that. So let's get into it. So let's give a shout out to the big names responsible for this issue. Cover artist Joe Staten, lovely Huntress there. Uh, writer Dennis O'Neill. Mm -hmm. And of course, penciler Mike Grell. Yeah. Nice. Now, I've been chasing down this book for the last 12, 18 months. It's been tough finding this book in grade priced accordingly. Mm -hmm. You can understand something like that. Paul, you were chasing that last issue, uh, Star Wars 107, quite for quite a while. Then I finally got it for you. You found it for me. And I a high deny. grade for a very reasonable price. Very reasonable. Well, you know that age, so I finally scratched it with this bad girl here. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Now, in the last year or so, uh, about 12, 18 months ago, a CTC near mint, mint 9.8 copy, finally crossed the Rubicon, the $1,000 US mark. Mm -hmm. Now, this had a trickle down or knockdown event on all the lower grades, at least for CGCs and generally for raw books too. Really? What I think happened there, I think some newbie speculator basically looked at the CGC census on this title and noticed that there were only a really few, relatively few copies graded at 9.8. Yeah, yeah, and so what happened? This guy paid a boatload of money for this book, way, way over the over the odds for a book in that grade. Yeah. Now, I think what the person who paid that style made the mistake of differentiating between scarce in grade and scarce in the market. Yeah. Yeah. This issue had a very, very healthy print run. So there are a lot of raw, high grade copies out there. But there hasn't really been a financial incentive for collectors to have this book slapped because there's really been no news about a TV show, movie, prospect, or anything featuring the Helena Wayne version of the Huntress. Mm -hmm. This explains the low CGC numbers for this book. Yeah. Okay, so let's the story here. From each beginning, from each ending, a beginning. Of course, it's, I think, the first appearance of the Huntress. Mm -hmm. Now, the Huntress would soon become a member of the Justice Society of America and associate of Infinity Incorporated. She appears next as a cameo in All-Star Comics issue 69, published concurrently with this issue. All-Star Comics 69 is sometimes credited as Huntress's first appearance. She actually, actually appears for the first time in this issue, however. Having said that, this is now open for debate based on the actual sales dates. Now, what do I mean by that? According to several sources, All-Star Comics 69 was released for a sale to the public on August 23rd, 1977, and this issue right here, DC Superstar 17, was released for sale to the public on August the 25th, 1977, making, I guess, technically, this issue the second appearance of the Huntress. Hmm. However, without official, official records from DC Comics, there's just no way to be 100% certain. Yeah. Okay, so for me, it's obvious which book I prefer, cover, great cover appeal for here, Stanton, great Huntress, yeah. other one, no cover and only cameo. Which one do you think I'm gonna be hunting for? That's for sure, yeah. Okay, yeah. so I got the book, I want it. Now, there's a final footnote, so this, this issue also includes a one, pa one page Huntress concept sketch by artist Joe Stanton. It's right there before the story begins in the issue. Okay, so the 47th Overstreet break, price breaks for this book are 24, 54, 102 and 150 US in the 6, 8, 9, and 9.2 grade splits. Mm -hmm. Now, again, give it a shout out to the stealthy Serbian there, Walter from Big B Comics in Hamilton. This was from their 
high quality half price bins. Very now, nice. was it, the question is, was it priced correctly and was it half price? Mm -hmm. So that depends on the grade. What do I grade do I think this? I think this is a nice higher mid grade. I would be conservative and say a fine, very fine seven is not out of the realm of possibility. Of seven, yeah. Yeah, it's a realm of seven. So what do you do? You add the six and the eight divided by two. So 54 and 24 divided by two, $39 US. This I paid twenty dollars oh, Canadian. Yeah. You did fine. You did fantastic. Half price plus the yeah. currency exchange rate on top of it. The Sunday, the yeah. cherry on the Sunday. Thank you, Walter. Yeah. Because again, let's be honest. A lot of the comic dealers they double the price and then put fifty percent off. So you're not yeah. getting nothing for. In that. this case, it was truly fifty yeah. percent plus. Fantastic pickup, Jose. I just got one question. What's up with the uh, the dude on the right side with, with, the, with the pink outfit there? Oh, that's one of the guys from the Legion. So, let's <laughs> have my final word. What do you again get in this book? You get the origin of the Huntress, you get the origin of the Green Arrow by Mike Grell, you get a Legion appearance, you get Earth 2 Batman and Catwoman marrying, producing Helena Wayne, and that's the first reveal and that appears concurrently this book and this, Brave and the Bold 197 and Superman Family 211. A book I've been itching to get that scratch off and I finally nabbed it. I'm happy with the grade. Yeah, it's cool, cool. But you can see Green Arrow right there with his hand over the guy in the pink dude going, say, dude, you can't go in there. There's a lady in there. You're wearing pink. And she has never looked hotter. Man, that, I love that Huntress cover. It's my favorite cover of her. Great pickup, Jose. I'm jealous. So, Paulie, in the, well, what is it? About four years that we've been shooting, or you've been shooting the, uh, have we ever shown a romance title? No, Jose, I don't believe we have. Well, you know, <laughs> I like breaking new ground. Oh, you're breaking new ground. And for this segment, I'll be featuring something never shown before in one of our episodes. Romance titles. Not one, but two. <laughs> not, oh, no. Yeah. Why not? Okay. I know, I know. On the one hand, romance comics disappeared in the 70s, and today seem to be a low priority in most people's collecting hierarchy. On the other hand, there seems to have been an increase for comic book covers as drivers of value, especially striking covers with pretty girls as a subject matter. Am I wrong? Luckily for the collector in the romance genre, there are plenty of those covers around, of course. Yeah. Now, the Harvey Weinstein abuse scandal has triggered a societal response that hopefully will lead to a turning point where things change never to be the same again. I know scandals of all kinds come and go, of course, they make for good press for a couple of news cycles, then seem to fade away. However, the Weinstein scandal looks to be a tipping point, so let's all hope it leads to a change in the culture. Yeah. Secret Diary of a Hollywood Starlet is the main story and the cover material of For Love Girls Love Stories, issue 176 from March of 1973. The cover, I think, captures the essence of the scandal and of what some young women had to and have endured while trying to succeed in Hollyweird. Mm -hmm. So, to sum things up, here we have a socially relevant cover with growing interest and appeal for good girl collectors like myself that is dirt cheap now in the market. Really? Okay? Yeah. Comics.org has Art Saf doing the pencils and the great Vince Coletta doing the inking chores on this cover. Nice pickup at $20 Canadian, about $15 US from veteran Michigan dealer Harley Yee. I would consider this about a nice high mid-grade book. What do I mean by that? Seven, seven, five, maybe. Mm -hmm. 47th overstreet price breaks for this book are 16, 23, and $30 US in the eight, nine, and 9.2 grade splits. So I did very reasonably well, yeah. exactly grade four considering exchange. Cool, cool. So the second title here that we have, because one is not enough, here we have Girls Romances issue 141 from June of 1969. Now, comic book collecting is very cover driven. Comic books like Black Cat issue number 50, Fantastic Four 112, Betty and Me 16, and Superman 14 are all sought after for their cover appeal. The cool part is that each of these covers is sought after for different reasons. Another cool part about co collecting, uh, comic book collecting is that there are many great covers still waiting to be quote unquote mm -hmm. discovered. Girls Romance issue 141 reveals a dynamic seldom explored in romance books, namely a mother versus daughter rivalry for the affections of a man. Mm -hmm. But hey, wait a minute here. Get a police, police lineup ready. 
isn't this dude the same guy seducing the young starlet in Girls Love Stories 176's cover? <laughs> it, 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 it does is. seem to be the same, same guy, dude. doesn't it? Same dude. This guy's like a rash. He gets around, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I digress. Yeah. So, but I only know of three such covers exploring this dynamic. Young Romance, issue 157, from January of 1969. Falling in Love, issue 131, from April of 1972, mm -hmm. and this book right here. Interestingly, all three are DC titles. Now, the late 60s was a time of great change in American and Western society, and movements like the Women's Live Movement meant that corny romance books written by middle-aged men for consumption by teenage girls' days, they were numbered. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The romance titles, however, did try to tackle some social issues, which is one of the main reasons that collecting romance titles from this era remains somewhat strong. But don't be fooled. These comics are tough to find, and finding them in high grade is almost unheard of these days. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to give our viewers a little inside scoop here. Grab these books if they ever become available, especially ones that offer covers of note, like these ones featured here. The, moder the mother daughter love triangle is just naughty enough and just taboo enough to merit special attention. Heck, it even garners interest from outside the comic collecting mm. community. These are great collectibles. And as Van Halen sang, does everybody want some? <laughs> yeah, I want some too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Again, yeah. another pickup for, yeah. uh, from Michigan dealer Harley Yee. Harley Again, Yee. Again, yeah. I get this one slightly better. This is a high mid grade. I would get this about a VF8, which is very good for these yeah. kind of books. 47th Open Street price picks for this book are exactly the same as the previous one. 16, 23, and 30 US for the 899.2 price mm. But So mm -hmm. am I missing something? Anyway, I, I thought these were kind of cool pickups. Wow, yeah, well, they're, uh, they're, they're pickups, that's for sure. <laughs> Nobody can say we don't discriminate in this show because we'll show just about everything, you know? We, hey, we, we don't discriminate. If Vita told me two years ago when I started shooting these episodes yeah. I'd be featuring uh, yeah. you know, Superman's girlfriend Lois Lane and Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen and now romance titles, I would have called you nuts, yeah. but here we are. I don't know what's more disturbing, the fact that you showed them or the fact that both of these uh, titles made it up to over the 150 issue range before these things back in the day man at the height there were a couple of hundred thousand oh, print runs on these things man i don't doubt it i don't doubt it yeah anyway That's, very cool snags man yeah, <laughs> condolences on your pickup jose condolences oh, thanks thanks <laughs> Nice gold key. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're into the painted covers, eh? Look at this. Golden Age uh, EC. Turn it this way a bit. Yeah, look nice. at that. Yeah. Some more Turok. Mm -hmm. Oh, we picked this up at the Toronto Comic Book Show. Look Very at that. Nice, yeah. A 9.4 near mint will run you $400. <laughs> Okay, so next up, Jose's got some really, really nice gems to show you. I think we're going to be showing three books in this segment, yeah, right? Yeah, the theme of this segment is Bargain Bondage Covers from Toronto Comic Con 2018. Cool. So, now, the definition of bargain here is not necessarily what the lowest price is, it's what the quality of the bondage cover. As so, compared to what you I pay. I suppose what to pay for it, because yeah. if that were the case, this would be the winner to begin with this segment right here, Spider-Woman issue number six from September of 1978. I only paid a five of this from the folks at Hagenland, so, you know, <laughs> you cannot define bargain more than that. It's the same price as a regular book today. Yeah, exactly. So, why am I talking about this book? This book boasts a striking Carmine Infantino bondage cover. And the cover has a stereotypical Marvel House style layout, but with a great image of Werewolf by Night adding to the scene. The dark cover makes high-grade copies especially striking to behold. However, this book delivers more than just a good cover. It's an early issue Spider-Woman that run from run book that is becoming more and more collectible and the issue marks the return of werewolf by night now mm -hmm. what do i mean by that let's go back wolfie first appeared in marvel spotlight issue number two from back in february of 1972 a product of the relaxing of the comics court authority brought in part by amazing spider-man issue 96 the drug issue published without comics court approval Wolfie was my personal favorite of the Marvel's three classic early 70s monster titles. Yeah. Of course, the other two being Tomb of 
Dracula and Monster Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. Werewolf by Night got his own title in September of 1972, hosting Moon Knight's first appearance in issue number 32, a red hot book in the marketplace right now. The title ran a somewhat respectable 43 issues ending in March of 1977. Uh, Werewolf by Night was a great character, a public domain property that really benefited from being done, quote unquote, the Marvel way. Mm -hmm. It's odd that he was suddenly forgotten so thoroughly after his title stopped. I mean, 18 months is a long time between appearances, and when just a few years back he was everywhere in Marvel Team Up, Marvel Premiere, and giant sized titles, etc. etc. Now, it will be another year still before we next saw Wolfie in a comic book, Spider Woman issue number 19 from October of 79. This makes Spider Woman issue 6 right here the only werewolf appearance in comics for almost a two and a half year period. Yet, yeah, despite all that, the book gets no love from the market. It's a high grade near mint, mint CTC 9 point slabbers. What can be had for? They can be had for less than a hundred bucks. Now, I know what you're thinking. I know, I know. This is no retirement fun book, but it should be worth way, way more than the market than it is going right now. Oh, for sure, for okay. sure. Okay, the 47th Overstreet price breaks for this book are five, six, and eight dollars only in the eight, nine, and nine point two grades. Now, it's interesting. The guys at Hagenland, they had a half dozen copies of this book to pick from, man. So I got the, you know, they were all relatively high grades, between seven and eight. Yeah. fives maybe some nines in there I, I you know i spent about five minutes scanning copies i think i got the best one but you know dark cover i just looked for any obvious things and it doesn't have anything corners are fairly sharp no spine take so for five bucks canadian which is less than that us you know bargain so that's bargain. the first book yeah. bargain let's go to the second book the second book is Wonder Woman issue number 200 from June of 1972. Now, in comparison with the previous bargain bondage cover, which truth be told has a rather stereotypical layout and a somewhat static composition, this Wonder Woman cover by Jeffrey Jones offers the viewer a dynamic bird's eye view on the proceedings. Sure, just like Wonder Woman issue 199, a book I featured in the Fan Expo 27, 2017 episode number 75, the Overall cover design, of course, suffers from too much text, but Jones' mastery of light and shadow adds a quiet cinematic sophistication rarely seen in comics. That's to me, sure. viewing the image in a virgin state, i.e. without titles and text, it brings to my mind's eye scenes from the classic Hammer horror film literary adaptations like Mask of the Red Death, Fall of the House of Usher, The Pit and the Pendulum, or The Raven. Now, in evaluating the relative merits of similar things, of course, there's always an element of subjectivity that is personal. However, having said that, I find this Jones cover much more effective in delivering a palpable, visceral feeling of menace and dread, which at the end of the day makes it quote unquote better as far as I'm concerned. But don't just take my word for it. Unlike the neglect afforded Spider-Man issue number 6 by the current marketplace, this issue and its sister issue 199 are officially conferred classic cover status by the market and are both hot in demand books. Yeah. Now, the spectacular, critical and box office success of the Patty Jenkins directed Wonder Woman film starring Gal Gadot cannot help but add to the demand and to the value of this issue. With the Wonder Woman Grails, like All-Star Comics issue number 8 at CGC 9.0 selling for 411000 and Wonder Woman number 1 at nearly 300 k fetching record prices at auction, a surge of female readership and participation in the marketplace, and a sequel already greenlit for production, it stands to reason that the interest and the appeal of these covers will only continue to grow going forward. As they say, a rising tide floats all boats. Overstreet Market Advisor Doug Salipa suggests adding 200% above the 45th Overstreet guys to determine current market prices for these books. I picked up this mid-grade copy. I would say it's about a 5.0, a good, a good a fine from Walter for Big B. Yeah. Now, from their bargain bin bones again, their mm -hmm. half price bins. Again, did I pay half price? The 47th Overstreet Price Guide showed 24, 56, 108, and 160 US as the 6, 8, 9, and 9.2 grade splits. So you do the math, 24 plus 16, 40 dollars US divided by two is 20 plus 200% triplets, 60 divided by two, 30 bucks. What did I pay? 30 bucks Canadian. I got the exchange rate for free, half price. Nice, nice. So really, um, <clears throat> they really think you should 
double, tri sorry, triple the guide, did you say, or double? For, for this uh, for this guy, you're basically tripling it. Cool, cool, fantastic book, Jose. You got one more underneath there? Yeah, one more, so we're going for the best bondage cover from Toronto 2018 Comic Con, and we're going to the golden age. Wow. Here is Jungle Comics issue number 77, from May of 1946. Fantastic. I guess any critique predicated on a good, better, best rationale has to subjectively have a winner, and thus my candidate for best bargain bondage cover pickup from the Comic-Con is this issue of Jungle Comics, number 77. Yeah, Fiction House was at the forefront when it came to hot, good girl bondage and headlight covers, and this issue definitely fits the bill for me. In this cover, a witch doctor prepares to eviscerate our leopard skin clad jungle girl, Ann Mason, holding a bowl ready to drain her. Now, the best part of the cover for me personally is the look of transfixed shock and terror depicted on our damsel in distress face as she stares fixedly on the golden bowl about to receive her life's blood. <laughs> Will B list target wannabe Kanga spear find its mark before the witch doctor's dagger sacrifices the maiden to the god Gia? Dum dum dum. Mm. I guess the only way for our viewers to find out the outcome is to read the 12 page story, The Golden Gourds Shriek Blood. <laughs> now, the Jungle House title for here from uh, Jungle Comics, the main guy, of course, was Kanga, which I referred to. He was a rather kind of familiar sounding Western child, orphan, and raised by apes in the jungle. Mm, I wonder where I've heard mm, that before. Yeah, that is, that is... Ah, if you were me, like I said, and I was the estate lawyer for the Edgar Rice Burroughs thing, I'd have some thoughts about some copyright mm. infringement there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The other Westerner in the picture, Ann Mason, uh, became his mate after he rescued her from some slavers. Really, I also dig the look of both the Witch Doctor's mask and the sculpture of the god Gia and the altar behind him. Now, I have a feeling that cover penciler slash inker Joe Doolin flipped through some ethnographic reference guides on tribal art and swiped and used the examples that appealed to him the best to use in this cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he actually took some art classes at the Chicago Academy of Fine Arts in 1916 with a future famous name from animation, none other than Walt Disney. Really? Yeah, yeah, he moved to New York and after relocating there to New York City, he started drawing for numerous pulps. Now, a further reason to support this pick as the best one of the con, of course, is that Golden Age Good Girl covers are in demand across the board and Fiction House titles are seeing a real upswing in the market. I made mental notes on what I saw for sale when I went to this year's Trauma Comic Con. Not a decent above 6.0 copy to be had, except the two I found, of which this was one of them. Yeah. Again, so I'm referring to, I think it's a solid 6.0, 5.6.0 6 grade, which for a golden age book, that's investment grade for this guy. I agree. Yes, great bondage cover. Now, because Fiction House books were printed on very much inferior newsprint paper, most of the copies I saw were low grade readers, about VG4s and under. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Condition flaws in those kind of books severely limit the eye appeal, which is all important for me as a good girl collector. The cover has to present well, and boy, does this cover. Uh, I picked it up, of course, from veteran Harley dealer Harley Yee. I picked it up as a bundle, this and one other Golden Age book. And this copy, I think, has largely escaped that fate. It's in a reasonable state of preservation. I would say this about a solid mid-grade 6.0 copies. 47th Over Street price breaks for the 6, 8, 9, and 9.2 grade splits. For the run books for Jungle Comics from 71 to 80 uh, issues are 75, 147, 241, and 335 dollars US. Mm -hmm. So at a 6.0 copy, 60 bucks, uh, I mean 55 dollars. Mm -hmm. Wow, what's that? 40, 41 dollars US. Mm -hmm. 75 is what it's going for, and I yeah. think that's a, a you know, rather rather low price. I would yeah. think a book like this in this condition, 100 dollars all day long. It, it, at least. At, at least, least, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I think that would yeah. be conservative. So a great pickup for me. Yeah. Great pickup. And I must say, of all. The comics you pick up the last weekend, Jose. This is by far my favorite cover, and you're not getting out of the, this house alive. I think I'm, I'm taking unless this say this is staying here with me, man. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, there's gonna be a fighting. <laughs> there's fight. Fantastic book, Jose. Absolutely oh, fantastic. I think so too. It's one of my pickups of the con. Nice. Okay, next up we got Big Mike with a really nice copy of Adventure Comics. 
Uh, I actually, on my eyesight's getting 409. 409. Yeah, <laughs> I can't yeah. even see the number. And there's a unique feature to this book, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, there is. Okay, so uh, again, riffing off of uh, High and Jose getting something nice from Harley Yee. I got this from Harley Yee as well. I was just leafing through, and uh, something just struck my eye. What is that? What is that? Okay, so th this is from uh, August 71. Uh, Dick. Giordano, uh, you, know, Giordano. you really have trouble Gaspard. with Giordano's name, don't you? All the time, all the it's time. It's all those vowels, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> yes, I know. And, and Gaspar uh, Sal Saladino. Okay. Uh, Saturn girls in this issue, as you see at the bottom, yeah, one and done. She, she appears and dies. Big deal. Who's Satan girl, you mean? Uh, Satan, Satan girl. Satan you said girl. Saturn, Saturn girl. Said She's Saturn from girl. the Legion. No, no, no. Oh, no. Sorry, sorry, I got that wrong. Yeah. Yeah, okay. and she actually is fighting against the Legion of Superheroes. So you're, messing cool up, thing. you're messing up Dick's name, Saturn Girl's name. I'm messing everything up. I'm messing <laughs> it Solando. up. But I will not mess up. Uh, hopefully I won't mess this up. Because there okay. was early issues where she's deciding about changing her costume. And this is one about, of them. Uh, but no, this is there's a cover where she's actually, there's about several pictures of her. Yeah. Which costume should I change? But that, that's not one of these issues. This issue right here basically uh, is, is listed as being, they went from the old cover, then in this issue she's wearing this ish, uh, a costume only, and then after this issue is her first appearance of her new costume which pretty much lasted for decades. So this is what you're saying, a one and done transitional costume yeah, issue? Yeah, just, just to translate what Mike just said, this is the one and only time she wore this costume. Yeah, so basically you know how girls are, oh I only wore it once, right? So yeah, so that's it, but she looks very sexy in this issue. Mm -hmm. I must say I do like this costume, it's too bad they didn't stick with it, but that's the that's the story behind this one you know and uh yeah basically and look at the cover appeal. Mm -hmm. it is cover fantastic. appeal is high on this and one and if you open it up and look at the, this costume she yeah. looks great in it she really does look yeah sassy. yeah yeah all right and what's underneath what do you got under there mike what do we have underneath oh my god i even forgot oh, oh we won the tag dragon. now that is a nice cover yeah <laughs> here we go wow pen dragon um I've seen this out his shop, and I always wanted to spring on it and never could. But he put it in his 50% bin all day long. I'm gonna take. So I mean, it. you got like Absolutely. 12 this for 12 and a 12 and 50 and Canadian. Yeah. So that's like 10 that bucks crazy. exactly about US. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. This is 378. Yes. So uh, yeah, okay. Translates to 1688, worth about 2850. I just like August what it looks 68. like. Yeah. Irv Novak cover. First appearance and single appearance. What? Yeah, I don't know what to call it. Uh, okay, I, whatever, I, I dude. Drunk when I started <laughs> running that stuff down, but anyway. <laughs> it looks good. It's a great run book. It's a detective comics. It, they're tough to get. I mean, the line work makes it hard to see that it's it's only about, uh, you know, about a 5.0. Well, because of the line work, but it is what it is, and I'm happy to have it at that. Yeah, the cover is very chaotic, so it would it would hide a lot of faults. So it does there hide is some, a lot of yeah, faults if you but take a really close look at it. It doesn't change the fact that that is a spectacular, probably one of the nicest covers I've seen uh, from Detective um, in quite a long time, Mike. I mean, that is really spectacular. Well, it's such a battle to getting anything under 400 that are in decent condition mm -hmm. or decent looking even though it's a mid, it still looks great. Yeah, as they say, uh, sixes are the new eight because <laughs> yeah. basically you get a nice looking six and uh, that'll have to do ya. Yeah. Oh yeah. Fantastic book, Mike. Thanks for bringing them both in. Okay, and for the final book of the night, <clears throat> and we have saved the best for last and that much is absolutely certain. And not only we saved the best for last, we are also about to show right here the oldest book we have ever shown in the history of our show and we've been doing this show for four years i've been doing it for two yeah <laughs> and this is by far the most exciting book i have ever seen in my life on this show this is from like 1945 yeah this is jumbo comics issue number 80 from october of 45 it's a 45 or from the year the second world war ended. ended yeah yeah so needless to say that's record-breaking episode then we have the oldest book and we've had some 
romance titles that we've never showcased our genre before. <laughs> That's so for sure. two extremes there. So but let's talk about this book right here. Yeah, my favorite pickup of the con. Again, the most expensive book of the con, but again, I guess you could consider a bargain. I, I paid 65 bucks Canadian for this, mm -hmm. so let's talk about this. So, America's sense of adventure and exploration were popularized during the 1930s, 40s, and 50s in various film and book media, mainly within three genres, jungle, western, and outer space. Of course, of those three, only one, outer space, aka sci-fi, still retains any significant popularity amongst collectors today. In its heyday, the jungle genre produced at least about 50 different jungle siren comic characters, ranging from Camilla, Wild Girl of the Congo, to Zegra, Jungle Empress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. ah, but perhaps none were more popular than Sheena, Queen of the Jungle. Yeah. yeah. The jungle siren theme was a perfect opportunity for Fiction House to seize a marketing opportunity. First appearance in Jumbo Comics issue number one with a story by legend Will Eisner and art by Mort Meskin, Sheena ran for 167 issues in Jumbo Comics starting in 1938, just three months after Superman's first appearance really? until ceasing publication in 1953. Mm -hmm. Sheena actually became the first female character to get her own comic book title. She even had her own TV series in 1955. She was played by an actress called Irish Makala. In fact, poster pinup girl Tanya Roberts, she starred as Sheena in the Hollywood big screen version in 1984. <laughs> yeah, barefoot and clad in a split neck leopard bikini, Sheena Rivington was a tough but sexy female lead who was constantly saving her hapless love interest, Bob Reynolds. That's right. Yeah, she, you know, from the natives and from animals, yeah. The stories contain mostly as many apes, felines, spears, and bondage as they do dated stereotyping. Mm -hmm. They are not politically correct books, if you could call them that. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about a little bit about something I seem to go on a bit, good girl art. The term good girl art originated in the early 1970s when comic book price guide consultant David Alexander inserted the term in comic book sales list to highlight specific panels and covers with sexy women. It was a good artistic depiction of females, well at least from a male point of view. Now anyway, from that time forward, the phrase good girl art became widely used by the comic collecting community to indicate a style of artwork in which attractive female characters are portrayed often provocatively, provocatively in locations such as outer space and the jungle. But to describe good girl art as just sensationalism to sell comic books would miss a richer underlying framework of characterizations. The artwork covers a wide spectrum including damsel in distress, villain, perfect wife, and cutesy badass among the female stereotypes. During World War II, women had, women had taken up jobs as welders and riveters by the millions, and their strength, determination, and contributions were reflected back in numerous comic book Wonder Women, characters who did battle with the evil Axis powers. The peak period of comic book Good Girl Art was the golden age of comics. Leading artists of the genre included Bill Ward and Matt Baker. Mm -hmm. Arguably the king of Good Girl Art, Baker was one of the few African Americans working as a comic book artist at the time. The creativity and skill of these and other artists left a rich legacy we can still admire and enjoy 70 plus years later. That's for sure. 72 years old this book is. Yes, exactly. So why do I love it? Well, a beautiful depiction of Sheena there looking sexy but strong doing that dance against that jungle, that Black Panther with that little kid in peril there in the middle distance when the women there kind of cowering at the edge of the village. It's a strong cover. It's got a usual dynamic in the front of the positioning of the uh, the threat or the beast or the monster and the female character, mm -hmm. but it just works. Mm -hmm. It's a formula that's just pleasing. It's great. It's like they're doing a dance. They're, they're, she's trying to spear him and he's trying to rake her. Yeah. A great, solid, I would say, mid-grade book. I think I picked up the only probably two mid-grade books, at least that Harley Yee had. Yeah. All the other ones, I guess were lower grades so let's end by saying that the 47th edition price breaks here are for this title 84 165 
270 and 375 dollars in the 6 8 9 and my 9.2 great splits so obviously i got these this book and the other uh, classic good girl bondage one for a total of 120 dollars 65 and 55 respectively which is about 90 dollars us that's about 45 dollars us a book under 50 bucks for great titles in a mid-grade 6.0 which i consider investment grade for the book no brainer yeah yeah fantastic jose <clears throat> And as you can see by a lot of the footage we've shown of the interiors of the book, this book isn't just about uh, uh, Sheena. It's kind of an anthology book. Oh, you yeah, these it. are all anthologies. All, it's got Sky all, Girl. Yeah. you got Sky Girl. you yeah. got Ghost Gallery, yeah. The Hawk. Yeah. And all really interesting stories, different characters, different stories. So a little bit for everyone because maybe not everybody is into the, you know, the whole jungle. It's like a buffet of different kind of characters. Yeah. So you were not really determined solely as far as a popularity of one particular thing for a title of a book, which was kind of smart, giving yeah. something, a little bit of something for everybody, thus increasing the appeal of the book and the title. And yeah, it's, uh, Hosea, this is spectacular. I'm, I'm in awe to be in its presence to be in a, a book this old and in this good condition, if you look at the corners, they're sharp as a pin. Um, really, really spectacular find. And you got this at the Toronto Comic. How, how much did you get? get a he had $75 on it. I picked it up for $65 Canadian, which is something like about 50 bucks US. Wow. Like I said, 45 it broke down with the other book. So, I mean, no brainer for about a fine 6.0 book. Yeah, so Harley Yee, thank you very much, sir. So you stole it. You stole <laughs> I, I almost stole oh. it. <laughs> okay, well, that's fantastic. You know, we're going to leave it there for tonight now. We're not finished showing There's books plenty of more where that came from. There's a lot more, yeah, where that came from. So to get through all the Toronto Comic Con books, it's probably going to take two, maybe even three episodes before yeah. we're done. But we're going to leave it for there tonight. We're going to end it with showing you a little bit more footage from the Toronto Comic Con. And uh, if you like what you saw, leave a comment, and we will see you next time. Literally, happy hoi hoi and hoi collecting. Uh, last of the 10 cent covers. Yeah. They would go up to 12 cents in a few issues. Hey, you can find them in mid grade for a reasonable price, though. 150 is not cheap. Nice. From Hagenland, bondage cover, black cover, werewolf and spider woman, five dollar nice. book. Yeah. Uh, spawn number nine, Hagenland again, first Angela, great mm -hmm. cover. Uh, Brave and the Bold, half price book, Big B. Uh, bought it for a Canadi canary cover. Nice. Nine four. Yes. Nine. Nine.